Bonjour. Today we've got the AMX 13, the famous AMX 13. It's looking a bit rough, isn't it? It's so complete and it's such an oddball sort of a vehicle because you just don't see these things very much. You know, the configuration of the engine, oscillating turret, self-loader, all those things are really unique about it. I've got no idea what sort of rockets they are that it fires, but... Jason will be able to tell us. He'll be able to tell us. I have had a bit of a peek at this before and at the moment the engine's a bit reluctant to, to turn over, which leads me to believe that there's something mechanically broken inside the engine that's stopping it from turning or there could be perhaps some corrosion. While we're up here in the hull, why don't we just have a bit of a look inside? There's not a lot of Can't see room much. in here or no. anything untouched by rust. Uh, this, this would be the gunner's, gunner's position because uh, you've got the controls here for the traverse of the turret and also the elevate but yeah you can see how it's pretty squeezy inside here there's no excess room on here I don't think you'd actually fit in here after a really good lunch you can see by the way that everything's biodegrading away that this is sort of either been communing with the fishes at some point or it was sort of <laughs> parked parked somewhere by the seaside because the level of corrosion on steel and stuff like yeah. that doesn't oh, happen without internal components too yeah, yeah yeah but it's complete though you know very there's, complete there's all of the controls and things are here so you know if there was ever a candidate for a restoration this would be it but it's all about time isn't it yeah. time and money time and money we'll get on top of the engine engine compartment and i'll sort of show you the issue that we've got with the uh, engine not turning currently so it's got two banks of four cylinders horizontally opposed. It's water cooled. If you remember the Panhard, that had a 12 cylinder, flat 12 cylinder air cooled engine. So the Panhard engine's probably the crazy uncle of this one, you know. It's supposed to make about 250 horsepower, but I don't know the size of the engine. There's not a lot of uh, information available on it. Twin carburetors, there's the air filters you can see. And what I want to show you is we've got the flywheel here for the transmission that should be just spinning freely it should you should be able to turn this very very easily that is solid yeah so the lizard part of my brain is telling me that uh, I should get serious and get a bigger lever but I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break it if I try and uh, turn it immediately I'm suspicious because this top here is rusty and this one is clean, so this could be a place where water can typically fall, get into the engine because it collects in the air filter, goes into the carburetor and then makes, it, uh, makes its way into the engine. So this might have been uncovered for a while. Yep. Man. Oh no! Ugh. So at some point, if the level of the water gets high enough, it'll come out of the top of the air filter housing, go into the carburetors, and then it'll fill up the intake manifolds. That's a pretty common, common place. So I think <laughs> we may have found a, a contributing factor underneath. There's a series of inspection ports underneath and this is what when you're out in the field or doing work on the tank you use for accessing things like spark plugs draining oil out of the engine and transmission. If you look here Curtis on the uh, right hand side of the hull we've got some further inspection plates and buried inside there are the top spark plugs for the engine so yeah there's not a lot of room in there to, to get to it. This here, this here where somebody's taken, oh, the, one. <laughs> taken the gas axe and put an access into the hole that didn't exist before. Only thing I can think of why that was done is that there must have been a problem with the magneto, because uh, that's the magneto which provides a spark for the spark plugs. That's loose. Okay. It's a spark plug. Hmm. Let me shine some light on it. I'm not real mechanical, but that doesn't 
That's Doesn't not look real good. good. That looks really, really, really buggered. It's loose as well. I have been religiously spraying this with um, WD-40 every couple of days to try and make it easier mm. in preparation to get this out, but oh, it's come loose. Maybe there's still something that's screwed in there. Tasty. Looks pretty crook. So that previous spark plug that I took out, this piece is still in the uh, <laughs> stuck in the cylinder head. And looking at this, I'm I'm not sure if it's worth trying to fight with it to um, to get it out at this point. Got my high tech piece of equipment here. So what you can see here. Is two of the valves around the edges there you can see the these are actually the intake and exhaust valves on the engine and if you have a look everything is coated in white powder the cylinder heads made out of aluminium so that means that it's had a load of water in there and it's just all rusty so remember it's eight cylinder uh, horizontally opposed so one lot of four cylinders is on that side and this lot's on this side there's normally a dividing plate which separates the driver's compartment from the engine, but that's all been removed, so you can actually see the engine there reasonably well. It takes a bit of a contortionist to get in. <laughs> yeah, like I said, beautifully complete. So got all of the engine instruments, uh, all the driver's controls mostly seem to work. And we've got this really cool looking gear change unit that hangs off the, the dashboard. It's a bit like one of those Citroen 2 CVs, <laughs> the way that it sort of works. You can see here that this is the left-hand bank of the eight cylinders here, and you can get a bit more access to the top, top spark plugs. And what we'll do is we'll have a look in the uh, number one cylinder and see if we can get some better views of what it's like inside the cylinder. Um, so it's more, it's more rust. This one's even worse, actually. It's just wall, wall to wall rust. Yeah, she's pretty grim. I think it's toast, actually. But in the name of science, I reckon we should uh, give it a go to at least see if we can get the engine to turn. All right. Okay, whenever you're ready. A little bit more speed. Oh. So I'm just dropping the clutch a bit to see if we can get it to move. Give it one more go. Yeah. Oh, no. All right, that's it. Let's pull it back to the original position. Put it in reverse. That's in reverse. Yeah. Uh, that's dead. A bit disappointing when we can't really have a result, but. It's not always rainbows and unicorns in this sort of uh, business, is it? A lot of people would be probably thinking, you know, oh, why can't you restore it? But it's all, you know, time and money. And when we've got really great projects like the Panzer One, we've got the Stug Three. That's we want to, we really want to get that up and running for for Oz Armor. We've got that N4 Sherman down the back there that's just crying for an engine and transmission in there. It's yeah, where do you put your resources to? Yeah. But the, the guys will give it a paint job, they'll do its nails and shoot yeah. it full of a bit of Botox and it's going to a nice home, it's going to be undercover so it's going to be preserved and it's so complete, 
if at a later date, you know, it can always be picked up and, and we can have a go at trying to get it running. But we gave it our best shot. <laughs>